our, in the Nurse Century Center in, in Pennsylvania, we, it's about a two-hour evaluation. We do a sensory integration test. We have them do different things with standing, eyes open, eyes closed, on foam balance. And then we actually do put electrodes on wow. their eyes, and they follow things left, right, up, and down, and we follow the eye movements. And the electrodes tell us how the brain is perceiving the information and how the eyes are responding. Once we get that information, and then we actually do a clinical evaluation. Mm -hmm. You know, we actually see them clinically, and we can test how well they're focusing, what their depth perception is, what their eye-hand coordination is. And once we get that information, we can then develop a program for them to treat it. So either it's a program with a therapist or it's a program with computer programs. Uh, we have a new one now with iPad that we're developing. I love I iPad. has been the best invention, I think. Well, let me tell you, we have never had programs with iPads. Now we have a good person that's developing an iPad program because his wife works with, um, with children that are of special needs. And the past computer programs required a mouse and keys. With the iPad, if we can get the kids to use the iPad, and like, it seems like all my autistic kids come in with iPads. Mm -hmm. We've developed now programs just specifically for these kids that have visual stimming problems on the iPad that's oh. corrected. So we figure it's going to be out soon. We're not sure when, but the program programming takes a lot longer than I ever thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, the ideas so, are there, just trying to get yeah. them. You but know, it's 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 pretty. It's, we're pretty happy about that because Very cool. because the kids love the iPad, and if we oh, can yes. do certain therapy techniques on the iPad. And the child thinks it's really a game. And it's a fun. And it's going to help them. Well, we, we just kill two birds with one stone. Well, and, you know? and it's amazing because when we got my son an iPad, I didn't even know how to work that darn thing. Oh, really? And he figured, I, he had never seen one. And the, our children are so brilliant. And I figured out how to download the stuff. And I'd gone away for a couple of days for work. I came back, and that child had already mastered all the games, and nobody showed him how to do it. Mm -hmm. They just, he figured it out, and I was talking to some of the, my other girlfriends who have children on the spectrum, and they're like, this is what they do. So I think if you could develop something for iPad, we oh. Have, well, it's, in, it's almost done. Oh, I'm I, so excited. I, I'm not doing it. We have a person that's doing all the programming, and it's his programs. But it's, it's, he said, we need to do this. I said, go ahead, because nobody else wants to do it. If you want to do it, go ahead. But, you know, it's interesting that when I talk to parents, and I usually say to them, you know, everybody thinks autistic kids are stupid. They're not. They're very, very smart. Mm -hmm. And you have to open up that lock to find out what's smart. Because when you're talking, you know, I hate talking in front of a child's autistic with the parents because the child's hearing everything. Mm -hmm. And yeah. how would you feel if somebody said, yeah. oh, so did you hear what Jeff did the other day? Yes. And, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, yeah. and you're like, I'm sitting right here. Exactly. And they can't express that. Mm -hmm. But then the kids start acting out. But So these kids are much smarter than you think. Mm -hmm. And probably on a very high intellectual level, they just have a different ability to express themselves. And if we can get that open and figure out how to help them, these kids can probably function in a normal environment down the road if we get them to recover through lots of biomedical treatment, through therapies, through neurosensory problems, and treatment. Now, where do you see um, diet, or do you, do you are you a big believer in how diet and sensory integration plays a role in some yeah, of these? Yeah, absolutely. I'm a Dan clinician. My wife uh, is also a Dan clinician. She's a nurse, um, and we're certified. And th the biggest problem we have is parents to understand it. So it's a lot of education. Um, if the kid doesn't have the right diet, the proper nutrition, the proper sleep, the proper immune system, no matter how many therapies you give them, it might only get to a certain level. Mm -hmm. If you can get all that balance, the therapy you're giving gets to a much higher level. And I see it in my patients. We see it where patients' parents, the, you know, the parents say, oh, we're not going to do that. We're just going to do the therapies. And we basically tell them, that's fine, but you might only get to a level of four and we might get to a level of ten. Absolutely. If you do what we want you to do, you might get to a level of eight. So we consider diet huge. Um, we consider um, nutrition huge. Um, supplements important. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, in our office, we do a lot of testing. We do a lot of... Um, food sensitivity, food allergy. We do a lot of micronutrient testing. We do a lot of heavy metal testing, you know, and we're also finding there's an there's a, a area there of viruses. We're finding there's a certain viruses. If you put these kids on antiviral um, biomedicals, they also seem to do better, okay? And do some of the um, stem issues of the eyes, if you've changed the diet, do you see some of that yes, go away? Yes, we do see that go away. Mm -hmm. Not all of it, okay? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we tell parents we're gonna, you know, there's, you have to look at a child as a patient and take it scientifically. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to tack it through diet, supplements, nutrition, sleep, immune viral, and therapies. Multi-pronged approach. Yes, you have to. Mm -hmm. You can't just do just therapies, just one. Now, there are instances where maybe it just needs a therapy or it just needs to be a diet change, but you have to look at all avenues. And I would say over 80 or 90% of our patients are multi-treated in terms of what has to be done. And the biggest problem that we see is that a lot of our parents Sometimes they don't understand it, so it takes a lot 
and a lot of education on what's important for these kids. I mean, I mean, almost all of our kids, all they want is chicken nuggets and macaroni and cheese. Yeah, my, and, and, my son and, only and ate five foods, chicken nuggets, pizza, waffles, cookies, and crackers. Well, he got five, yeah. rather than two. <laughs> oh, when I learned about diet, I was like, okay, all those are going what, out the door. Don't you agree? Oh, diet absolutely. Is huge. That was the first thing we did after two weeks after the diagnosis. I was Googling. One of the first things that popped up was diet, and I mm. thought, well, I was on a waiting list to see a doctor, but I knew I could make the food. I could figure that out. Was it easy? And I'll be honest. Exactly right. In the beginning, I was like looking at all the ingredients. I didn't know what the heck gluten mm -hmm. was. I didn't know what casein was. Um, and then, you know what? As parents, because we just want our kids to feel better mm -hmm. and get better, you learn it. Sure. And it is hard in the beginning because we, we didn't grow up knowing that. But then all of a sudden you say, well, gosh, if it can help, if, if there's a 1% chance mm -hmm. that this could help my child, mm -hmm. and all I'm doing is changing the diet. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll try that. Mm -hmm. And if you really think about it, when you're in the produce section mm -hmm. or the meat department, for the most part, guys, that is gluten-free, casein-free. Right. And yet, if we think about how our grandparents fed us, we didn't have prepackaged foods and going through drive throughs mm -hmm. and Happy Meals. And no. today, you know, we can actually do really amazing you, things with our kids. You know, you wonder why 20 years ago it was 1 in 10,000 kids. <sighs> Now it's one in 98, and somebody says, oh, it's genetics. And if it's genetics, if, if, you know, if you take a, a biology course 101 in college, for genetics to change, it takes three generations, which is a generation is 30 years. That's 90 years for it to change that much. And we're talking about 12 years. Well, that's like saying so, so everyone it, back it, then it, had it, blonde hair or right. one out of 10,000, yeah. and now you know, it's one different. out of 91 between the ages of 3 and 17 have blonde uh, hair. It's impossible. It's, <laughs> yeah. That's right. So yeah. it, there, it, there may be a genetic predisposition. Mm -hmm. But what are the triggers? Absolutely. Are the triggers of viruses? Are the triggers of diets? Are the triggers of nutrition? Are the triggers of poor functioning visually to the brain? It's lots of triggers. And, and if you can discover those triggers and what they are or treat them accordingly from clinical-based knowledge, you see lots of improvements. And that's the key. The biggest problem we see is, oh, physicians uh, that do a primary care practice, oh, it's not going to work, it's not going to work. And I always tell parents, you have nothing to lose. Absolutely. Because there is really no m medical standard of treatment on autism today. Mm -hmm. There's no standard of care. They'll say, oh, just live with it. I thought, but you, we can't tell parents that because there is recovery. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you there's recovery. You've seen recovery in your son. We've seen recovery in hundreds of our patients. And you talk to the other Dan doctors, they'll tell you the same thing. Well, and the one thing I tell a lot of the parents is if you stand right here and you don't move for the next three months, I can't guarantee much in life, but I can guarantee you'll be right here in three months. Exactly right. You have to take one step somewhere. I like that. I like that. <laughs> I have to use that sometime. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, because, you know, we can't guarantee much, but we can guarantee that, That's right? That's right. Well, I have had such a pleasure talking with you. It was and nice I want to thank you so much for coming out early in the morning to talk with us. Well, I appreciate you fitting me in this time of the day. <laughs> and for you guys who have missed the conference, um, I, again, really encourage you to go to the website of www.nationalautism.com association.org, but also check out Dr. Becker's website, which is www.keystonensc.com. Again, that's keystonensc.com, making sure I got that right. And he works with children all over the world, and please find them, and um, if it's a good fit, I definitely would recommend uh, checking out what they do. Thank you to all of you guys once again for allowing us to bring hope into your homes. Until next time, bye. Thank you for joining us for Autism Approved with Kristen Sylvie Gonzalez. Please join us next week for another episode brought to you by Enza Medica.